Hi friends, today four tips to make your Curie Technique reconstructions more safe and predictable. And also one extra bonus, the most common mistake that we all do when starting in this technique. Let's go for it. Hello, my name is Jose Luis Mompel from DLR Surgery and together with my partner in crime, Dr. Juan Lara, we're gonna share with you today these four tips and the extra bonus on how to be safe and predictable when performing bone augmentations following Curie's principles. First tip we want to share with you today is what kind of material do we need to perform this technique? And the answer is quite clear, autogenous bone. Why? Because it's the only material that have all the properties that we need to be safe and predictable. Osteoinduction, osteoconduction, osteogenicity with no antigenicity. But at this moment you may think about how do I harvest a bone block? We will need a bone block. We will need a bone block to do the whole procedure. How do we harvest a bone block? I strongly recommend you to see these six useful tips to harvest a bone block in order to be more safe when you do it uh, in your office. And then what do we do with this bone block? Okay, we are going to do several things in order to create the ideal graph. Okay, we are trying to imitate nature and we will see how we can do this in order to have a fast revascularization concept. Okay, but first tip, remember, although we have a lot of biomaterials, allografts, xenografts, the only one that have all the properties is autogenous bone. We must have autogenous bone when doing bone augmentation following Curie's principle. The second tip that we have to keep in mind and we must do always when doing Curie technique is how thick is the thin bone blades. The thin bone blades shouldn't be too thick. How much is too thick? Too thick is more than one millimeter, 1.2 millimeter. More than that usually is too much. Why? Because we need that those thin bone blades get revascularized and if we place a too thick uh, bone block it's going to be really difficult for the organism to revascularize that dense bone. So remember that the thin bone blades should be thin, more or less 0.8 millimeters, one millimeter thick, no more. Don't forget to see the typical mistake that we all do when we are starting with the Curie technique. Third tip that we want to share with you is, okay, we already have our bone block, I already harvest my bone block, I already split it in two very thin bone blades, approximately 0.8, one millimeter, as Juan already told you, and now what? We need particulate bone, we need bone chips in order to recreate, to resemble the particulate bone, the spongious bone that it's already lost. And where do we harvest from this particulate bone? We can harvest it either from the same area where we harvest our bone block, we can scrape the edges of the area where the bone was harvested, we can scrape the recipient side in order to make it bleed and recollect some bone, and also we can make our bone blades even thinner by scraping them at the same time we recollect some bone. Remember, the cortical bone is the one that has the most BMPs, which are the proteins that have the most osteoinductive capacity. The fourth tip, which is mandatory, is always to have a good fixation of the bone graft. The, the bone graft shouldn't have any mobility. It should be unmobilized. It should be fixed to the patient without any movement. Why? Because if we have some movement, the bone graft is probably going to expose and we are going to lose everything. So remember that our bone graft should be immobile. Okay, once we get here, we want to share with you this extra bonus, the biggest mistake we all have made when starting doing this curry technique. Okay, we have our thin bone blade, we have, it, we have it fixed, really well fixed, no mobility at all, and we are packing bone chips in between the recipient side and this thin bone blade. But at that time, we realized that the space we left between the recipient side and the thin bone blade is less than eight millimeters. So now what happened when we're going to insert, we're going to place our 3.8 
millimeter implant. It happens that the width that we have obtained is not enough. So the biggest mistake you can do when doing this technique is not to leave enough space in between the recipient side and the thin bone blade. You do not leave enough space for the particulate bone, for the bone chips to be packed. And at the time of re-entry, four months later, you will not have enough bone to place in a safe way your 3.8 millimeter implant. So you have to keep in mind, always keep in mind this, leaving at least eight millimeters in between your recipient side and your bone blade. Of course, there are some exceptions. If you have four millimeters width in your native bone, you will only need to leave five millimeters in between the bone and the thin bone blade. But the aim of the reconstruction is to obtain at least eight, nine millimeters width in the area that is being reconstructed. Remember not to leave too little space. That's the biggest mistake you are going to do when starting. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed these tips. Remember to follow us. Remember to leave your comments right here below. And as we always say, the scalpel in your hand, but the prostodontic work in your head.